everyone. Welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, hello, take that hello. midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on. Maybe in the world of Linux, in the world uh -huh. of um, oh man, my, I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose my nerd card. Uh, cling on home planet. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. This is gonna bug me. What is it, Joe? I'm spacing. Oh man, <laughs> how embarrassing! Hey man, I'm, t I'm taking uh, you down with me. My... Um, Kronos. No, it's on the tip of Kronos. It Kronos. It's on Kronos. the tip of my tongue. Oh god. <laughs> We're gonna be talking about <laughs> Kronos as well. Yes. Um, how embarrassing! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> you, you know what, kids? You can get off both our lawns. Um, yeah. <laughs> check it out. I'm Vin. That's Jill. Everyone watching this live on Twitch, maybe listening after the fact, but most of you are. How's it going? Hopefully you're having a good Wednesday or Thursday or whenever you're picking up our nonsense. So, Jill, I, I was doing a thing yesterday and you're just like, I'm going to show up too. Yeah. So, yeah, I had a lot of fun playing Track Mania, Mania Stadium yesterday where we, where we uh, tested uh, different maps and tracks so we can get good for Friday. <laughs> <laughs> this is something but it uh, was a lot of fun i'm glad you showed <laughs> up and this is like you can come into we're doing track media stadium 2 which is a much ignored game in the series but it's really cheap it runs on a calculator and on linux all you have to do is pop in with proton there's no setup just boom it's done we got a private linux server that i set up but it's super accessible because it's just bouncing around trying to get to the end of the track. And sometimes just finishing the map is its own reward. Yeah. Unlike another <laughs> game that I've been playing, I I burnt a heretic purchase and I bought God of War. Because, man. Nice. Like, Horizons. <laughs> these are my types of games. You give me a Tomb Raider. You give me Horizon Zero Dawn. Like, semi-open world, story-driven action RPG. I'm going to eat it up. I'm going to sit and play the whole thing. Having a good time with that. If you're curious, how's that running on Linux? Day one, it was a little rough because we were building up shaders, but now pretty decent out of the box. It does have a very curious issue with, and this is on Windows too. If you full screen it, it's going to default to whatever the native resolution of your desktop is. In my case, it's 2160p and I have a 2160. So when I go full screen, I have to enable DLSS on my NVIDIA card and cut the uh, speed all the way up to fugly. So I'm like upscaling mm. 720p textures to 2160p to get it to hover around, you know, 5560 on normal. While in a 1080p window, it's a lot better. But hey, that that's the price you pay. And it's also, that's just goes to show you that uh, Proton compatibility with Windows, pretty spot on. Hopefully they'll fix that. Mm -hmm. They don't seem to think it's a bug, but hey, who knows? Hi. You did a great job fighting that dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jill. This is, you, Jill gets to see some of my, you know, I'm not good at games. I'm not good at a lot of things, but I'm persistent. <laughs> I don't give up. I will keep dying and dying. It's like watching a really dumb meat AI trying to figure something out because that's all it is. Like, I'll just keep smashing against it. And yes, I, I did a happy dance when I finally killed that dragon. I'm like, yes. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> Not a clever man. So, <laughs> we're promising Klingons, we need to deliver. Yes. So, you can say success, or you can say kapla. <laughs> yes, this is so cool. Initial, there's initial language support for Klingon and inter-Slavic. It's coming to LibreOffice. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> this is actually really ma amazing, and it shows the power and the versatility of open source software. LibreOffice is actually available in over 100 languages, and the Document Foundation would like to expand that even further, even if it's Klingonese. <laughs> I don't even know where this to go so with cool. this. I didn't expect this. But yeah, I mean... With open source software, just being able to come back in and throw them like, oh, we want Klingon support. Why? Because we want it. Okay. Can you imagine getting that in Microsoft Office? No. No. <laughs> that just and, won't be a thing. You know, yeah. And this is, you know, just wonderful for all of us Star Trek fans. And it's also very helpful, you know, for those who write 
documentation for Star Trek conventions or prose for Star Trek novels for the script writers and the actors of a Star Trek series, absolutely, or for those who just want to write Klingonese. What, what, what if I'm like... It's needed. Working on a new Shakespeare play. <laughs> ah, there's that. Uh, you, can, you can read Hamlet in Klingonese. So that does exist. In, in, in fact, lots of, the, lots of Shakespeare has been translated to Klingonese. It's even been talked about in, in the movies, <laughs> in the Star Trek movies. So what's really cool is, you know, thanks to a book, a, a well-known book called The Klingon Dictionary, written by Star Trek's linguist Mark Okrand, that, that came out back in 1985. Klingonese is, a, is an official language in the show. So it, it was, you know, fully written out as a, an amazing language. And it's nice that we have a word processor and, you know, a suite that we can write, <laughs> write the kaplaz in. And toy too. <laughs> Nerd. Uh, Nerd. <laughs> no, I mean, so, I was kind of interested I mean, in the more serious part of this is uh, throwing in 100% more inter Slavic, which I, I did a little background. Yeah. Do a little research inter Slavic. That, that's an interesting concept. Um, and I'm glad that that's in there as well. But it's fun. It's Klingon. And it, it, don't have a problem with other people enjoying things is basically what I'm getting at. Like, this is neat. There's no need for any type of hate on it whatsoever. And I'm going to say good on them. Good on them. So say we all. Now. Absolutely. <laughs> System 76 has got some hot, cosmic, rusty stuff. We've talked about this on the show, and I was kind yeah, of interested ben. in it. About, cause, you know, they're, they're kind of like the new canonical. They're like, hey, you know what? We're going to try some crazier things or some experimental things. While well, canonical these days is too busy putting on the suit and tie. I'm like, hey, we're going to be all like nice and professional. System 76 mm -hmm. is, hey, we're going to do something a little strange. And that's a rust powered desktop there's mm -hmm. a little bit of news on this exploring system 76's new rust based desktop environment this is all of the links for all of this is going to be in the show notes but this is kind of fun just like walking through there's a disclaimer it's still a work in progress it's a couple of years away but what most everyone's going to see here is this is a preview now i gotta be honest with you this starts off with a thing called settings showing you the differences between <laughs> the system 76 settings and what is just in standard GNOME. I'm not up to snuff on GNOME. So I, it genuinely took me a second just looking at this, no cheating. Which, <laughs> which one was this GNOME in System 76? <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Oh, it's the one with the extra blue bits. It's the one on the left. All the blue bits. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> again, I've been over this wrong person to ask. I, when it comes to, you know, visual niceties, I just kind of skip over them. But that's either a saving grace for me or a fault, however you want to play that. But yeah, it's the one with the blue bits. I'm looking at it. There, there's some like nice blue bits on that. Always on search is going to be a thing in the new System76 desktop. Yeah. Along with a that's floating nice. window app library and a new compositor. But that's not enabled um, currently at the just moment. Yet. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. having like a floating launcher, I'm kind of down with that. I like that idea. Like maybe you can just pop something that's going to be wherever, you know, your cursor's at instead of having to go down to a launcher. Maybe. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, System76 had changed that in GNOME because it used to be a, a full screen one and then they mm. made it smaller. So their, their new uh, Cosmic is uh, going to, even reduce the size more apparently. So what's really cool is that uh, you know System76 CEO and founder Carl Rochelle, he actually says the first Pop OS release with Cosmic DE will be in 2023. And they are, are going to call it Epic One. And they'll likely have alpha releases this summer, which is really cool. And he also said that the UX will remain similar to the current GNOME-based Cosmic, but there will be a unique aesthetic and functional differences. And, you know, this rusty Cosmic is still a work in progress, and I am really looking forward to this. This is going to be awesome. I think right right now, I think there's there's 
they're they're developing smaller changes that look more like the GNOME interface, but I think in the future, you know, things are going to really change. <laughs> I will go take the other thing because I'm a huge fan of not broke, don't fix. Yes. So <laughs> while I, I understand where you come from, Joe, like, hey, let's change mm-hmm. things. I'm I'm not a huge fan of changing things for the sake of change. Yeah. Well, they will, you know, System 76 is very, very good about listening to their audience and seeing what they would like in the OS. What if so everyone that, says, that's... burn it all down? I want. No. <laughs> We're just all excited to have another, you know, DE in this space. And it's made of rust. Awesome. <laughs> a great use for rust. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> I, again, you're trying something new. Good on you, everyone at System76. I'm glad to see that. And uh, that's something I'm going to be following. And I, it, it is possible to champion something you're never going to use, people. Okay? Because yeah. I know you're always going to use XFCE. Yes, I am. But I still like this <laughs> stuff. This is awesome. Yes. But this is amazing. <laughs> there's a... Yeah. Maybe some people have thought, you know, there used to be a time. There used to be a time. Hey, if you need to get serious work done at home, install Linux, mm-hmm. couldn't play games, couldn't do anything, couldn't watch movies, and, you know, you were just stuck. You could code on Linux. That's all you could do. These days, it's not the case. Too many video games mm-hmm. on Linux, and all, all the streaming services are available on Linux, distracting you away. Maybe you want to go back to where you just really can't do much. Yeah. Well, there is actually a new desktop operating system which is built from scratch, open source, simple, and respects the user. It's called Essence. And it's built with a small size, is lean and fast, very memory efficient. And, you know, it's built to run on low-powered hardware. And and uh, the whole point of it is, is the, in the article they talk about, we have um, lost the simplicity and memory efficiency of operating systems because they've become so bloated, (laughs) you know, in today's day. And uh, what's really neat is that Essence can take less than 30 megabytes of drive space and boot with even less RAM. And I actually downloaded the essence.tar.xz and imported the .ova in VirtualBox, and it, it booted almost instantaneous. It was really, really fast and amazing. And it's kind of cool. Did you notice, Finn, that uh, in order to uh, launch a new application, you create a tab at the top of a window that then launches a menu in the window for apps and you you click on the app and then uh, that app launches in the window. And a lot of that's that's there's there were some there's some older Unix um, desktop environments that were very similar to this, actually. Uh, who likes old Unix desktop <laughs> environments, Jill? Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> and I think this is just, a, it was, it, it's really nice to see a company focusing on uh, less bloat. <laughs> I, I am happy about that. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, this is in the tradition of one person. It's like, I'm going to make my own operating system. And, you know, it's pretty neat. It is always neat. Uh, way, way back when the olds will remember, we used to follow this on, there used to be this site called Slashdot. And, um, Absolutely. We would yeah. follow the development of a one-person project, very similar, called SkyOS. You have to do uh, some- SkyOS. You got to go to yeah. webarchive.org to dig this thing out because the big joke one, this guy, he was working on the TCP IP stack. I'm like, do not call it Skynet, please. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Ben, this kind of reminds me of a modern day desktop version of Minix. Minix. Why, <laughs> yeah. Why, 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 why? That's kind of what we have here. <laughs> it really. <laughs> These minimal hipsters, man. They want their BOS. Yeah. And yeah I get absolutely. It. I get it. You know, having a modern OS that can boot effectively on a calculator these days is kind of neat, especially when you just can't go out and buy brand new stuff unless you can make it rain money. Yeah. So I, I support something yeah. that's tight, small, efficient. Talking about efficient, the UI is completely vector-based. Which mm-hmm. Yeah, very impressive, huh? Pretty neat. I <laughs> and mean, the, the themes were really nice, too. You can easily change the colors. 
and nice desktop wallpapers were default. <laughs> I went through some of the desktop wallpapers. <laughs> but yeah, the fact that it's vector based made it, you know, quick, snappy and, and sharp looking. I mean, even things like as much hated Flash, that's the reason Flash got away with so much um, on such limited bandwidth. But it, I think having a vector based UI is just fascinating from that aspect alone. Mm-hmm. That's something I want to go back and look really into. Is. Network support's kind of limited. It only works with the Intel 8254 X dash, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, Ethernet video is another thing I went looking for. Don't expect yeah. a whole lot. BGA, VGA. That's it right now because um, that's hard to do. That that's something yeah. that's going to come later on. Apps are a little on the limited side. You got a file yeah. manager now. Then again, you could conversely make the argument: no, it's only for efficiency. Um, file manager, text editor, of course, IRC. One of the first things you need to get mm-hmm. up and running on your operating system, which I'm not even joking. Like, <laughs> makes sense. That tracks. Yeah. And um, <laughs> absolutely. A system monitor, which is all right. That need uh, yeah. all it needs. All it needs, so we can poke a little hole in that dam of efficiency as a web browser so I can screw around a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this project because it's it's kind of head, headed in a lo- some of the same direction as uh, some of my other favorite micro distros like Tiny Core Linux, Astrumi, Slytaz, um, Puppy Linux. You know, so th- this, I, I'm looking forward to seeing the progress of this, definitely. And it's not Linux. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's got some busy box bits, but it's not Linux. <laughs> why not? Oh, and did you notice? Did you notice, Fen, that um, if you looked in the virtual box, it, it says uh, Windows um, file system? No, I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, I was I was looking through a virtual box, and that was that was interesting because I did read in one of their articles that they they were going to be supporting. Uh, uh, Microsoft uh, file systems. Oh, so I was dead to me now, Joe. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. I was like, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, no, you, you got things That's like awesome. That. Like, <laughs> you're doing pretty good in your life if you can get upset over the file system of an operator. Yeah, Arr. yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's better things to get upset about. Now, this might come as a surprise to some of you. I'm kind of mm-hmm. interested, just a little bit, in audio production. And video production on Linux, I know. Look ass. So I tend to keep track of like what's going on in the space of digital audio workstations in a project that I've been following, relatively new in the scene, is Z Rhythm. And they got a pretty big announcement with their nice. latest release, which is a point release. And something that kind of caught me off guard, they're moving to GTK4. Yeah. Like, okay. Which is interesting because mm-hmm. projects like Odd are using GTK2 and they're like, we're not changing it. Why? Because it works. But they're going to be taking advantage of the built-in caching and hardware rendering capabilities of GTK4. Okay. Because yes. that, that's going to let you run things like your digital audio workstation on a potato PC. Okay. You absolutely have my attention. And Zero them has come a long, long way in a very, very short amount of time. Look at that. Look at that. that oh, beautiful. It's very <laughs> pretty, isn't it? Now, um, native LV to support... I'm, I'm talking audio stuff, nerd stuff. So if you're worried about it, just kind of zone out for a second. That supports kind of next right now until they figure out a solid workaround. But VST, VST3, all that stuff is going to be working. No problem. But check this out. Uh, I installed the trial. I installed the trial. Mm. And I, I put it on this box uh, in studio, which is just our streaming rig. And ran fine. Started up. Looked at it. I'm like, oh, I don't want to learn a new DAW. And, but I... Uh, it ran, it launched, no problems. But I do something that is completely out of scope compared to most people is I run this screen on this monitor is running Harrison Mixbus and it can be running on door. It could be running Bitvig, It could be running Reaper, but this entire display, even the 3d elements are coming in over SSH using indirect rendering which is tied to Jackbox, which is a completely different computer, which allows me to run the dock headless. So I'm not booting in mm. X, nothing like that. None of that's running on Jackbox. It's like, I run a DAW and I send that over to this computer. I wanted to see how that was going to play with GTK4. Short story, delete X split have caught on fire, yo. It didn't happen. It, it, it's 
spectacularly exploded. They're like, well, maybe not. Maybe not going to be able to get away with that neat trick. Still very good to see. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I will say this, kind of like Adore, because I saw that there were different models and very, very reasonable uh, support options. You know, if you go to, let's take a look. If I want to download Z-Rhythm, basics free, save and loads disabled, okay, bundled plugins, five pounds for single, 15 for the bundle, and $5 a month for my nightly builds, which is great, which is very great. But I knew, I knew for a fact when I went to the GitHub and looked for like a, like an easy chunked up um, dependency for the build, you know, like, hey, what do I need for Debian or Arch or anything like that? They are listed, but it's not very convenient. So one thing I'll probably do, at least for Debian-based distributions, is I like building stuff myself. Uh, just come up with the package dependencies for that so you're not playing that fishing game. But yeah, very fascinating project. And it's the first thing I know of that's going to be leveraging hardware acceleration through GTK4. It's pretty neat. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. I think you're going to have fun testing that out. And um, it looks like it's pretty, it has some interesting new changes. It's got a new searchable preferences, preference dialog, because I know in those audio programs, there's tons of preferences. <laughs> so that'll make it easier to find things. <laughs> and this is still a work in progress, but was re it re was released early to encourage more testing of these latest changes like Venn is doing. Mm. I yeah. want to play with it and uh, more does more better. And one thing we have on Linux that I, I probably don't respond to as much that's had to die out because this was one of the arguments for the longest time. Like, well, there's no digital audio workstations on Linux. This is untrue. All the major ones outside of Ableton or, you know, somebody's mm. going to say Pro Tools. And I'm like, well, yeah, you buy the Mac for that. But, you know, outside of Ableton, everything else has a native Linux version. And this could definitely be a contender in the future. Keep your eyes on it. Yeah. Now, I went and bought another Motu <laughs> audio interface because I was sitting around thinking, you know what? I only have three Motu audio interfaces, and that's not a nice round number. It's not what I thought at all. But I ran <laughs> across this, and I knew people were interested in this. This came out in 2019. I did a video on it, a brand new interfacing Linux. These take a while to get out because I do test this. This thing was run in production for Linux Schemecast weekly. I seriously do test these things. I don't plug them in and go, look, it connects, go buy them, smash that bell, fam, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I go through, I do latency measurements on them. I don't get into the weeds with the technical stuff, but it works really nice and it's reasonably priced. You can pick them up again, just showing that this is it running that's the session for Linux Gamecast nice. Weekly from last week. And it had a couple of X runs, but like six for an hour and a half. What I was really impressed, really, really impressed is the round trip latency, more so with kernel 516. Because at 44.1, that's not what I run at. Let me come on. Come on. There we go. 48K. At 48K is what I run everything at. With a buffer size of 128. This thing is 7.53 millisecond round trip. From a USB audio interface, which doesn't sound maybe like these are just random numbers. Understandable. Yeah. This is within striking distance of my RME9632, which is a PCI card. So, and that's oh, coming in over nice. USB. Yeah. That's incredible. That, I mean, which means that I can use it for real time monitoring because, you know, I'm chill saying things, I'm saying things, it's got to go through the dots, mm -hmm. got to get processed. And it's got to get tracked out to the other boxes, but it's also going to come back into my ear so I can hear what's coming out in post. You can do it with this. You can do it with this without having a crazy small buffer. The problem is when you start getting down like a buffer size of 32 or a buffer size of 64, that's when it starts spitting X runs out because you don't have much wiggle mm. room. And one of the advantages of like an RME or something like that is it was able to have incredibly low, relatively low, round trip latency with a higher buffer size. This can almost match it. And they're not expensive. They're about two hundred dollars and we all 200? know. Two hundred? Yeah. We know I didn't pay that for it. But Yeah. It works as a sound card mm -hmm. since you're gonna try to use it as one anyway with Pulse Audio. You plug it in, all the fun stuff, Jack out of the box, works with the Elsa driver. I want to make a point that you're going to need kernel five fourteen or newer 
unless you really like audio glitches. If that's your thing, just random like and static and stuff like that, go for it. But yeah, I just go through the testing setup. There's the video and all the other fun stuff that you might expect from a standard old man VIN and another audio interface. But more importantly, now you know what works. Now you know what doesn't. And uh, yeah, everything's on our web zone. If you like the video and all that, give it a share. As I always say, I'm just buying these with my spare cash and putting them out. So hopefully people at least find them informative. Maybe entertaining. I don't know. <laughs> Jill doesn't like them at all. She's like, oh, <laughs> another one. I know Ven didn't like the uh, the bling bling of the uh, um, uh, VU meters oh. that, are, that you couldn't turn off. <laughs> it's not. Okay. Here's the thing. See, I'm a reasonable human being. I am. <laughs> I am. There are front meters. Now, I do point out with budget audio interfaces like Focusrite Scarlet Series and SSL's got them and everybody's got their own thing. Universal audio. That's probably the next one I'm going to get. You got to have that gimmick. You, you got to do something because yeah. what you're selling people is a glorified sound card, but so it's got to have something special on it. And Motu decided to take the meters from their A280S and put one on the front of it. And it's just this bouncy VU suggestion line that it, it's not numbered. It's not. Oh, it's not numbered. No DBs. Nothing. Listed. Nothing. Oh. It's just color code. Because in the video, <laughs> I said I've determined that this Unity zero DBFS is somewhere around this hex color code. So I want to punch that in. Wow. Yeah, that's not functional. Yeah. <laughs> and like it looks nice. I'm like, yeah, that's neat. Yeah. You can watch it bounce around. It looks all nice and. Per- is it useful? Not a little bit. Nothing. Doesn't do anything. It's got a clip light, but you know you clip if you're monitoring. Uh, and yeah. The biggest problem is, is you cannot, I mean, how do you cut it off? You get some gaffer tape and you go, whoosh, stick it over the front <laughs> yeah. of it. And it, even then, if you're out and about, or if you get your laptop, that thing's, that displays what drains the most life out of any mobile device, backlights. So, I mean, that's just constantly running. You can't even dim it. Can't yeah. cut it off. It's just sucking power. But they did put a power switch on it. They won my heart with mm. that. I've, that's nice. Yeah, being <laughs> able to cut something off. Without having to unplug it. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> amazing technology from Mark of the Universe. <laughs> Especially with the USB duck bill. Ah. <laughs> that is convenient. <laughs> having a off switch. <laughs> also, I am mortified by the USB-C connectors. Mm, yeah. I, I fully right. understand. Yeah. <laughs> why you do it. Because it's like, hey, it's USB-C on both ends. But it compared to like the type A connectors, because a type A connector, yeah. I feel comfortable like reaching over, picking something up by a type A connector because there's that, all that surface area. The USB-C, I feel mm-hmm. like I'm going to snap off if I'm not careful with it. Yeah, it comes in and out very easily. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully you like it. Hopefully you dig it. And uh, what I'm trying to do is just, you know, cover everything that I can get my hands on so people have that reference. Like, hey, does this work on Linux? Like, I don't know. Let me see if I can get one. And we will find out together. If you like what I do, I mean, like everything that we do, one thing you can, mm-hmm. if you get a minute, maybe share our videos and stuff like that, but you can become a patron yeah. over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. There you go. There's a big honking ad, but we throw some things in to sweeten the deal. We got an extra mm-hmm. hour. We get a bonus show just for patrons, the pre pre super shows, and that's a production meeting each and every week. Jill pops in. Mm-hmm. What's going on? And. We, we just talk about what, what we're watching, things that we got planned in the future, what you, you know, the behind the scenes stuff. If you're interested in that, that is there. But we also have a live and uncut series that we make available in podcast form. Now, that is on our second YouTube channel that comes out a week later, which I just remembered I forgot to release last week's before the show. Yeah. Ah. Um, <laughs> I make that available in uh, podcast MP3. It'll be in your custom RSS feed from Patreon, and uh, you get the video version a week early with the live and uncut. We also make the video version for the pre release super shows. And bond. yeah, thanks for your support. We get to do this, and we kind of get to do what we're interested in. You know, I'm interested in, in doing the audio stuff on the Mac end and the show's topics. We're going to launch a show talking about Klingon. I mean, uh, yes. Why? <laughs> we'll just call it Kapla. Yeah. <laughs> Kapla from Kronos. <laughs> Couple of other things we got over at LinuxGameCast.com. We got Amazon wish list and all the fun stuff because 
we're just kind of rocking and rolling, doing this what we can. Uh, that's how you end up on the list by Curie for Anything Group Studio, but it's going to be wicked expensive. So I'd suggest heading over and see what Jill has on hers. Like somebody did yeah. this week. Yeah. So thank you, Frosty. So Angel Frostclaw20 in chat got me this adorable pink plush penguin. Isn't he cute from my Amazon it's wish list? Horrifying. It's adorable. And this is perfect because, see, I need little ones because I'm kind of running out of space for all my penguins. So having a little one is nice. So this is my smallest uh, pink one. And he wrote me a sweet message. And it says, El Pinguino Rosado from Angel Mercedes. That means the pink penguin from Angel Mercedes. Thank you, Frostclaw, otherwise known as Angel. Thank you. He's been one of our, one of our, you know, my favorite uh, patrons and friends here on Linux Gamecast for a long time. So thank you so much. I love him. <laughs> That's just pure nightmare, man. That's <laughs> so cute. It did make me think that we were joking about this in the um, pre-show, which would be uh, go back and listen to that if you want. the The idea of a stuffed Clippy. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I think that's great. The more I talked about it, the more I thought about it. I'm like, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind having that stuff clippy. I mean, that'd be kind of fun to have in the background. <laughs> It'd be real easy to make, too. I mean, just like stretch up, put some stuffing, roll it up, slap some eyeballs on it, and like a machete yeah. or something. Yeah, just like regular. You can sell it on Etsy and eBay. <laughs> that's that's what I, Oh, speaking of that. Thanks, Joe. We have a store. Store.linuxemcast.com. Yes. You can get some LWW Classic <laughs> merch and uh, some other stuff that we have. Like, uh, somebody asked me where I got this. This is a common question that comes up about every five or six months. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I made this. That's where it came from. This this was me relearning Inkscape is what this was. However, <laughs> the little sticker down here, our Hello sticker, you can pick up from the store. It's a die cut sticker. They're really nice. High quality along with the shirts. So yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. um, where are we at? Where are we at? Right. Slice of pie. Would you bite, <laughs> would you bite into this? Uh, that's a cloth blueberry pie. <laughs> A cloth and I think it's a leather with with a blue cloth. Not not what I asked. So would you bite into it? Too, Come on. No, no, that wouldn't be Aww. too tasty <laughs> unless you're Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could boil it like a boot, and it would be nice and tender. Yeah, <laughs> you can make some stone soup with it. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> put some stones in it and 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 so and then put that that leather flavoring in there leather flavoring now i'm going to have to search can i buy some leather flavoring what does leather flavoring taste like what do you yeah. imagine leather flavoring tastes like probably tastes like sadness Old? Leather. i don't yeah. know maybe um where are we oh right so we are going to talk yeah. about something raspberry pie related uh, malware on the yeah no detecting malware on the pie huh yeah, this is amazing. A team of researchers at France's Research Institute of Computer Science and Random Systems actually created an anti-malware system centered around a Raspberry Pi that scans devices for electromagnetic waves. And it has up to 99.8% accuracy. It's just, my mind is blown. Uh, this seems like magic to me. But this article, in the article, it states the security device uses an oscilloscope, a Picoscope 6407, and an H-field probe connected to a Raspberry Pi 2B to pick up abnormalities in specific electromagnetic waves emitted by computers that are under attack. The, de the detection system then relies on convolution neural networks to determine whether the data gathered indicates the presence of a threat. Wow, isn't that an amazing use of electromagnetic waves and AI? <laughs> I'm just so impressed. I mean, if you want to use them for good, maybe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and but what's really nice is this actually brings low overhead to the picture and, you know, to IT or or scientific experiments and um, server in infrastructure because it is not software-based. It is hardware-based. So hmm. you don't have to worry about, about implementing that in your administrative toolkit, except as hardware. 
And, you know, the, the actual hardware that is connected to the Pi is quite expensive. But this is still an amazing, you know, an amazing um, way to <laughs> use this technology. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it only cost them the price of the equipment and the Raspberry Pi <laughs> and a couple. Yeah. It warms my heart to know that no matter... <laughs> Where you're at, I mean, if you're sitting around the house by yourself on a weekend afternoon, or if you're a researcher and you see it, it yeah. if you just see a Raspberry Pi in the corner, you're like, I got to figure out something to do with that. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's so, you know, it, it it's, it's definitely magic. It's kind of like our, our, our BIOS is made of a quartz chip in our computers and that, that frequency is what you know tells the computer um, what frequency to run on that that little quartz crystal. I <laughs> that's magic too, but it's also science, and this is just as amazing. <laughs> this is pretty neat. It's outside of my pay grade, but hey, like, <laughs> rock on! Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, we got to get out of here. We're running a little bit long, yeah. but if you want to get a hold of us, head over to the web zone, linuxteamcast.com, smash that contact button, fam. Pick the right show. I mean, if you LWDW is what we do, Linux Weekly, Daily, Wednesdays. We got LGC Weekly. We got reviews, talks. If you're working on a neat project or something in the open source community, maybe you want to come on the show. We'd love to have you. And of course, we have others and relationship advice as well. Just give us a name, give us an email we can reach you at, and uh, we'll be in touch. We got to get out of here, Joe. Yeah. We okay. Gotta ride. Time to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Oh boy, electromagnetic waves. Oh. Well, I mean, yeah, the trick yes. is getting the electricity in the rocks, though, right? Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. The lightning. Oh my gosh. Well, when I first read, read that article, I was thinking, wow, this is a physical way to detect a disturbance in the force, for sure. <laughs> electromagnetic magnetic waves, amazing. Ah, and thank you to all our wonderful patrons, our sea monsters, our advisors, our death notes. Oh boy, we love you all. Thank you. Without you, we wouldn't be doing this and bringing all these wonderful podcasts to you. <laughs> you know, you can joke about magnets all you want, man, but once you realize that we still genuinely don't have a agreed upon thing about what is gravity? <laughs> yeah, Jordan. <laughs> we'll see you next week, everyone. Thanks for showing up. Oh. Till then. Good point, Jordan. <laughs> Bye all. Love you. <laughs> <laughs>